Hey everyone, it's Southern Bell Canto. I have a fun holiday movie review for you. So I do love movies. It's one of my passions. So my actually, so my next video will actually be about Golden Globes. But this is a fun holiday quasi romance. I would say it's a romance. The romance isn't the full plot, but you still get the gist of it. And that is um, a castle for Christmas. Hopefully you can see it without the glare. It was a Netflix release. It's only available on Netflix. So sadly, if you don't have Netflix, you wouldn't have a way to watch it. But um, there might be other ways soon. And I believe it's written by a, a popular romance novelist. So it might be come out as a book maybe next Christmas. I think that's what I've heard. And it might have a sequel or like mini novella with it. But this was a really fun story. Um, it starred Brooke Shields, and his name is Carrie Elwes. And I actually looked up Carrie Elwes because I was like, what have I seen him in? I've never really seen him before. He is um, the prince from The Princess Bride. I can believe it. I didn't realize that was him. Because I thought, if, that, if he's not Scottish, he does a really good Scottish accent. But... Yeah, that was the prince from The Princess Bride. I was completely shook by that. <laughs> but that was really interesting. But our story begins with Brooke Shields. She plays a, a famous author, uh, Sophie Brown. And I never got the full gist of her books. But from what I sort of gandered from the little snippets she gave about her novels, is she was sort of like Diana Gabaldon, I think. It sounded like she wrote romance novels that had like a supernatural twist, possibly with like a magic well instead of like the magic stones of Outlander. I'm not fully sure if that's correct. If you've watched it and you got a better grasp of what her novels were about, let me know. But I think it was basically like Outlander. I'm not fully sure, but it really seemed like she basically wrote like an Outlander-esque series that was very popular. Well, anyway... Um, Sophie Brookshields is headed towards the Drew Barrymore show and she's getting a lot of backlash. Backlash. Her 10th um, novel in the series has gotten horrible reviews and a lot of outrage because she killed off like the main hero of the story. So it'd be like if Diana Gabaldon just killed off Jamie. <laughs> And basically everyone is outraged and it's really funny because all of the people, including Drew Barrymore, who plays herself, is like, how could you kill my boyfriend? <laughs> like they had no grasp of like um, a character being just a fictitious character, not a real life boyfriend, which I thought was really funny because that's sort of like a joke in the romance community. Like who are your book boyfriends? Who are your book um, lovers or whatever? <laughs> And I just thought that was really comical. They were like, you killed my boyfriend sort of thing. So I, I thought that was interesting. Well, uh, Sophie decides to escape all the negativity of New York City. And she wants to head to Scotland. Her father, it seemed, was born and lived like his younger years in Scotland. And I guess her family was all Scottish. And so Sophie heads to Scotland to... Um, I guess she was in Edinburgh, but I think it's like a two-hour um, train slash car ride from Edinburgh to where she is, and it's like Dun Dunbar Castle, and so she's staying at, I think it's called the Castle Inn, where she meets a lot of wonderful characters. She meets Maisie, Helen, uh, Rona, Angus. And Lexi is there, but I'm not sure who Lexi was. I'm having to read off a cast list. <laughs> Sorry. But she meets these wonderful people. I love, especially loved Maisie. She was a really good friend to Sophie and just had a lot of uh, comedic moments. And she's a really good actress as well. And so she meets all these characters and she knows that it's like basically a small little bike ride, like not even a mile probably to the castle. And she knows she has family history at the castle from stories her father told and her father has since passed and it's still pretty fresh. So Sophie takes a bike ride and wouldn't you know it, the last tour of the day just happened. And so she's, she thinks she has to come back 
the next day or like Thursday for the next tour. And she bumps into this grumpy man who she met when she first got to the inn, who's also grumpy, and she thinks he's a groundskeeper. Well, the grumpy gentleman decides to give her a private tour. And so she's enjoying her private tour, but also she's searching for in her father's stories, he told her about trying to carve his name into the back of one of the doors. And so she thinks she knows where this door is from her father's stories and memories. And so she tries to find it. And I think she tells the, the guide, the grumpy man she's met before, the guide, that she needs to use the ladies room. I can't really remember, sadly. But either way, they get separated. He has to go do something or she needs to use the ladies room or something. And she finds the door. She's taking pictures, sending to her daughter. Her daughter is Lexi. That's who Lexi was. Sorry. <laughs> so she's taking pictures. And the Duke, um, spoiler, <laughs> the, uh, the groundskeeper, grumpy gentleman, um, sees that she's snuck off and is really mad and basically kicks her out of the castle. Well, she gets back to the inn and finds out that the grumpy man is the duke. He is the, you know, owner of the castle. That's his family's home. And he is a real life duke, um, in the story. <laughs> and, you know, she decides that there's a lot of, um, debt in the town with the people as well as there's debt for the castle because they're sort of um, a tourist attraction but they don't really have a lot of tourists and things and so Sophie decides she wants to buy the castle and I think the the deadline is the day after Christmas or Christmas Day so she decides she's going to buy the castle with her money and she moves into the castle in one of the guest rooms with the grumpy duke and of course, it's this wonderful grumpy sunshine trope, which a lot of us really adore. There's a wonderful dog. Um, there was really good romance and there was a lot of fun, like secondary characters. And I think it was rated G, possibly PG. But I mean, this is basically like a Hallmark movie formula. <laughs> You're not going to get anything um, brazen or uh, there's no nudity or sex scenes. I don't believe there was any cursing. If it was, it was very, very brief and mild, but I'm pretty sure this was either rated G, possibly PG, but you know, sometimes movies are PG just because they don't want to make it G, so they think, I'll bring my little kid to see it, because they think the, the kid would think it's boring or something. So like, um, take for example some of the Jane Austen adaptations, like Pride and Prejudice with Keira Knightley, they had like a close-up of a pig's testicles, like in the first three minutes. They literally did that, so it'd be PG. And if you watch um, the 2020 version of Emma with Anya, Anya, excuse me, Anya Taylor Joy, and I um, can't remember the other people, Mia Goth, and all those, um, they have a scene with Mr. Knightley, Mr. Knightley, um, with his buttocks showing. He's getting dressed or undressed or something, and it's just to make it PG, not anything else. So, sorry for my little rant about the rating system or whatever. But yeah, it's, I think, a family movie. Um, it's more of a romance, so maybe not like little kids, like popcorn movie. But it was fun. You can watch it with your grandma. If you like clean, um, wholesome holiday movies, I would give this a shot. It, to me, didn't really get holiday to like 45 to 50 minutes in. Because I was thinking to myself, this looks really springy. Like, and I guess she basically is going to live... She lived at the castle for a few months, but I thought there's going to be Christmas Eve from the very beginning. So it's not like there's snow in the first scene. It gets snowy and magical and big Christmas trees and lights um, within, I'd say, the last hour of the film, but still a lot of fun. Um, if you love Scotland, if you love just fun um, romances, this was a really good rom-com. Um, I say take it for what it is. It is basically a holiday television movie. I mean, it's on Netflix, but it's still like their television Netflix, if you know what I mean. So don't think it's going to be an Oscar winner, but it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I think a lot of people will too. I watched it with my mom when we were decorating and we had a lot of fun. And my aunt also watched it another time too. So if you're looking for a fun uh, holiday spirit movie, try A Castle for Christmas on Netflix.
Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed my little movie review. Hopefully, I didn't give away too many spoilers. Um, let me know in the comments if you've watched it, if you plan to watch it. Uh, let me know. I hope you all have a great day. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Southern Bill Canto. Bye, everyone.